This only happened mere months ago, Leonius. Our capital city surrounded by a wall of fire and being bombarded by stone. My soldiers were nothing more than terrified young men and women. Some of them were veterans, but the majority were just out of basic training. They did not expect this to happen. They did not want this to happen. They were simply guards defending a bazaar or a Taj. They were there to defend the people, not fight against tyrants fueled by a religious zealotry. So, there we were, Leonius, surrounded by flame, unable to escape its spreading heat. The enemy did not advance. They remained by the burning village. Minutes turned into hours. Hours nearly turned into days. Nothing happened. Just the sounds of the chaos of the capital city behind us, recovering from that horrid bombardment of the trebuchets. As time went on, even the flames had begun to die out. Some of our mages were able to control the fire, weaving it away from our forces, or even the water mages dousing out and reducing it to steam. Even the archers on your crusader vessels retracted their flame-tongue arrowheads and ceased fire. I'll admit, Leonius, I was confused, and I felt incredibly insecure. Nothing but silence had filled the air now, and it was followed by a wave of tension amongst myself and all of my soldiers. When, all of a sudden, a singular trebuchet fired, but not with stone and not with a fire-engulfed ball, but a chunk of what seemed to be meat. I was unsure at the time, due to the night sky. I turned to my men and commanded them to brace and raise their shields. However, it mattered not. This item of meat landed at my feet. It made this horrid, splattering sound and warmed liquid touched my armoured feet. Leonius, I opened my eyes and realised that this war was not a war, but a butchering, a game, one that Thymesia wished us to lose. There, on the sandy ground, was a lump of meat. But as I approached closer, using the torchlight, I realized that it was not a regular piece of meat, no. It was a head, a severed head. One head belonging to that young Kytonin lad from the village. His tongue was hanging out from his mouth and his expression was one of utter fear, although half his head was crushed and imploded from the impact. In fact, one of his horns had shattered into a million tiny pieces. Though, on his last remaining horn, there was an impaled piece of ripped parchment. I did not wish to disgrace the boy even further. I simply ripped off the parchment from his horn and left his head where it was. I unfurled it, and it read to us. Kneel to God, or burn. You have a day. Seeing as you are now my captive, Leonius, you can probably guess as to the choice we made as the Arid Empire. We did not kneel. We fought back and sounded the war cry of the Arid Empire, unifying our allies under one banner. Our allies of Vosmana and the Frozen South. We are yet to hear from Kopresh. I watched as I told Leonius my tale. I watched into Leonius's troubled eyes. He was a man dragged into something that he had no control over. The church dominated Thymesia, aside from Loquin. His expression soured and became entrapped in thought. I could sense immediately that he was debating with himself. Perhaps I was right. The Maomorians wanted nothing to do with this war. And then he spoke to me, finally. Basim, what some of my folks have done to your kind is unjust, wrong. I, 
can only apologise. Hearing this, I looked at him with certainty. He was giving me an honest and fair answer. He is but one man in an army of thousands upon thousands. In which I responded with, Apology accepted, Leonius. Though you needn't apologise. I do not hate you or your kind. I hate your church. We, Chitonin, as a species, hate the divine. We have since our creation, thanks to our master. But that hatred has increased even more so these days, as you can tell. You and I are very similar. We are but one person in an army. And we, Chitonin, are one soldier in one army in one empire. We fight on many fronts due to this crusade. Some of our troops have even landed in Valpen, whilst some of your crusaders scour our desert, burning down our villages. Our dragonkin allies are attacking from the north. But I have to say, Leonius, as much as you apologize, and as much as you regret what has happened this day, I did notice that your soldiers, specifically your personal guard, and yourself, you were fighting with a zealotry, a ferocity, I have never seen in humankind before. Attacking my soldiers with a hatred I never thought I'd witness. Some of the slurs, some of the, well, butchery I saw. You weren't killing them. You were maiming my soldiers. At this point, Leonis fell silent. I could tell he was plucking his mind of a way to respond to me. Eventually he did. Aye, we're all just chess pieces being plucked about on a board, and that board being the churches. He responded, fell silent once again, and paused to think. Eventually he did speak, regarding my final comment. <sighs> but see, I don't know what to tell you. You see, the church inserted inquisitors and chaplains into all of our forces, even some paladins as well, ensuring that we fight with such a hatred that we don't just attack you on sight, that we do everything we can to make you less demon, in their words, not mine. What hurts me the most as a captain of my Maomorian soldiers is that seeing some of my auxiliaries and even veterinari being forced to fight old friends, and old friends being the people of your kind, Basim. At this moment, I fell silent. My fears were confirmed. The Church of Thymesia was a far greater tyrant. It wished for our extermination and all those who are considered vile or even abhuman, such as the dwarves or even the halflings. I looked at Leonius, stood from my chair, took one final sip from my copreshi tea, and spoke. I suppose this calls for a momentary truce? Allow you to collect your dead whilst I collect mine? I asked. This was a war after all. I did not expect the Maomorian veterinary to surrender so early on in the war. Leonius cracked a smile and spoke to me. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so, Bessie. Look, it might not mean a lot right now, but thank you. You know, we're being shipped off to Copresh alongside our masterful paladin Horus and his Copreshi wife, Mallory. You know what? I have to say this one thing. I hate the heat. Your empire, all of you lot, why have you got to be in all the hot countries? Can't be bothered to fight in sand. Gets in all your armour and all that kind of jazz. This made me smile. Even in such a horrid situation, it was good to see that... Even in the midst of chaos, that we still had a sense of humour and humility. 
showed that we were still alive. I smiled and spoke to him. Ah, Kopresh. Well, they're not formally part of the Empire yet. They are in negotiations with us. We trade with them, hence the tea. But they are not formally part yet. Zafoni Ered, our Empress, has not gone over there to conduct the terms of the agreements. I suppose you and your soldiers are heading there to secure trade, especially if you're going with a Kopreshi herself. I prodded. I wish to know more. This could change the tide of the war. If the Empire secured Kopresh, then Thymesia, the country, would be surrounded by four members of the Empire. Leonius looked at me and simply shrugged. And he said, Can't say, I'm afraid, mate. Not because I'm trying to be sneaky, but it's because I have no idea myself. This is a strictly need-to-know basis mission, and only Horace and Mallory knows. Something to do with a man named Father Dawn. I looked at him. I did not know this name. It was a fair answer. I spoke to him once more. Leonius, I must say, for someone who is so independent and so honest with his opinions regarding the church and this entire crusade, I have to remind you, you are not lab dogs. You can fight on your own. Hell, even we Kytonian admired your lord. The Gilded Lion is his name, correct? I doubt he would be ever ruled by religion. Judging by the tales, anyway, we've heard. Should the time come, and the rest of your kingdom become open-minded such as yourself, seek me out. We shall have a talk. At this moment, Leonius offered me a hand, which I gladly shook. Huh. <laughs> that you can count on. Stay safe, Basim. Very anox. I nodded and said, Tharaton Anjaidaton. It means good fortune, friend. As Leonius left the tent, I ordered some of my own men to help him and his veterinary in assistance in burying his dead. This was their homeland, after all. I wish it had never happened, nor had it come to this. I had repeated what had been done to me to my capital city. But I saw a glimmer of hope in Leonius. I hope things do change, but I fear for what is to come. What of Kopresh? Will Vosmana assault with our forces? Will we keep our desert home? As I speak and write this very tale, I know my homelands and the various cities and districts are attacked day and night by the Foxton Crusaders, the Valpin Pegasi Knights, the Dwarven Bull Butchers, and so forth. This moment, this very chat, was the first humane interaction I have had in months. We are six months into this crusade, and I fear for what is to come. I fear that this will be years, not days.